Welcome, my name is Roger and I'll be showing you how to configure the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler. This is part one of a three part configuration series. Let's start by opening the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler configuration panel from the Windows Start menu. Note that there are three main functions or modes. Classic Client to Classic Server. Those of you that have used existing versions of Matricon OPC UA Tunneler will be familiar with this. This mode is used when both the OPC client and OPC server are using the existing OPC specifications, now known as OPC Classic specifications. These are OPC DA or real time data, OPC HDA or historical data, and OPC A and E or alarms and events. In this mode, you will need to install Tunneler on both the OPC client and OPC server computers. We will cover this mode in this video today. The next mode is Classic Client to UA Server. You would normally use this mode when you are trying to connect an OPC client that supports a classic OPC specification to an OPC server that supports the UA specification. You only need to install Tunneler on the OPC client side when using this mode as OPC UA is firewall friendly and provides the pipe between. This will be covered in part two. The final mode is UA client to classic server. You would use this mode when connecting an OPC client that supports OPC UA to an OPC server that supports a classic OPC specification. In this mode, you only need to install Tunneler on the OPC server side. The OPC UA client will use OPC UA to remotely connect to Tunneler and Tunneler will convert the communications for the locally installed OPC server. This will be covered in part three. Taking a look at classic client classic server. There are two items in here, client side gateway and server side gateway. As previously mentioned, you need to install Tunneler on both the OPC client and OPC server computers. You will only need to adjust one of these items per computer, depending on which side you are on. For this video, I have set up two virtual machines, one for the OPC client and the other for the OPC server. Let's start by configuring the OPC server side, which is the computer I am currently on. Expand the Tunneler server side gateway configuration. There is not much to do in here, but I will run over the options for you. By default, encryption is enabled. If you do not have a requirement for this, I recommend dis disabling this, then clicking apply. There are options to set up user impersonation and restriction of the access to OPC servers. If required, please check the associated checkbox and the edit settings buttons for the respective settings will become available. Moving on to the advanced tab, these settings generally will not need adjusting. If you want to use a different TCP port, you can adjust it here. If you are using an OPC server that supports an older specification, such as OPC DA 1.0, you may need to enable the browse registry option here. The server side component logging can also be configured here if required. If you want Tunneler to use a different TCP port than default, you can change it here. Note that you must choose a TCP port which is not used by any other applications. In general, the only setting that needs to be adjusted on the server side component is encryption. If you change any of these settings in the server side area, we recommend closing the GUI and then restarting the Windows service called Matricon OPC Tunneler SSC, which I will show you now. Please close the Tunneler GUI first. Open Windows Services by clicking the Windows Start menu and typing Services. 
If you are using an older operating system, choose Start, then Run, then type services.msc and push Enter. Locate the service called Matricon OPC Tunneler SSC and then restart it. This is a good time to tell you that some OPC servers require the OPC client to be running as a specific user in order to access them. The matrix on OPC Tunneler SSC is actually the OPC client that will be connecting to your OPC server. You can set this service to log on as a specific user if required. I normally recommend that you determine what user the OPC server is running as and then match the Tunneler SSC server to run as the same user here. Again, when complete, restart the service so the new settings are loaded. Close Windows services when complete. You have now configured the tunnel server side component. Now we'll move on to the OPC client computer and open the Matricon OPC UA tunneler configuration from the Windows start menu. Click yes here. Choose the classic client classic server option, but this time expand the tunneler client side gateway configuration. Let me take you through the control panel first. The plus sign is for adding a new remote connection and the trash button deletes existing remote connections. Next to the refresh button is the key manager which controls encryption. If your tunneler server side configuration has encryption enabled you can configure mappings here. The next two buttons allow you to import and export the tunneler client side configuration. Finally the last button, button configures the client side logging. General logging will show activity between the client side and the server side. The interface logging will show activity between the OPC client and Tunneler CSC. One interface log per OPC client connection will be created. That covers the control panel. Let's go ahead and make a connection to the remote OPC server now. First, let's run a quick command line based test to ensure the chosen port is open between the OPC client and OPC server computers. Recall in the previous video we added the Telnet component to Windows. This is where we'll use it. Click the start button and then type CMD. Then click command prompt when it appears. Type Telnet, then the name or IP address of the remote computer, then the port number that Tunneler will be using. In this case, we are using the default 21379, and push Enter. If the Tunneler SSC service is running on the OPC server computer and the specified port is open, you will see a black window with a flashing cursor up the top left. If the port is blocked, perhaps by a firewall, an error will be returned. Note that an error may also indicate that the Matricon OPC Tunneler SSC service is not running on the remote computer or has been configured to listen on a different port. Close the command prompt and return to the Tunneler configuration window. If you haven't done so already, press the plus button. Then type the remote computer and then click OK.
If this procedure was successful, a list of OPC servers from the remote computer will be returned and registered locally. Note that you can register multiple remote connections in here so long as all remote computers have Tunneler running on them. Please close the GUI at this time. Because Tunneler runs as a Windows service, there is no need to have the configuration open after a successful registration. The next thing to do is to verify the newly created Tunneler connection to the remote OPC server. We will connect to the test OPC client, Matricon OPC Explorer, on the local computer to Matricon OPC server for simulation on the remote computer via Tunneler. Note that both of these products are free and are installed by default with most Matricon products. Click the Windows Start menu and locate Matricon OPC Explorer. The registered Tunneler connections will be seen in the left hand pane of Explorer under Local Host. This is the genius of Tunneler. It actually makes OPC clients think they are connecting to a local OPC server, where in fact the OPC servers are remotely located. Click on the Tunneler Matricon OPC simulation. Note that there are three. Please ensure that you do not choose one of the ones suffixed with HDA or AE, as we will be testing a real-time connection. Click Connect. Note in the state down the bottom, connected says yes and state is running. If the state said failed, we recommend going back to your previous configuration and checking it on the tunneler side. If the state says suspended, we recommend checking your license of tunneler as it is probably expired. Go ahead and click add tags. You'll be able to see that your tags on your remote OPC server are now available. Go ahead and double click a tag to add it to the right hand side, tags to be added area and click OK. You should see good quality with changing values, assuming the tag that you chose is updating. You can now move on to test the specific OPC server that you are trying to connect to. Once you have confirmed data from your OPC server into OPC Explorer, go ahead and connect your software that has an OPC DA client to the tunneler connection that you just tested. If your OPC client requires a host name for the OPC server, be sure to choose local host or the name of the computer that the software resides on. Remember, Tunneler registers the remote OPC servers as if they are local, so you do not need to specify the details of the remote OPC server, just localhost. For the program ID, you can simply take a look at what is listed in Explorer and type that into your software. It'll be something like Tunneler colon, the OPC server name or IP address, colon, and then the program ID of your OPC server. Congratulations! You've successfully configured a classic client to classic server tunneler connection.